Chris Fern here, back with another review from the Ghostbusters Select line by Diamond Select Toys. Uh, this time we have Ray Stance, the heart of the Ghostbusters, as per Peter Venkman. Uh, same box as before, uh, as the Lewis Tully figure. Uh, only difference is, you know, you substitute Ray and the back's got Lewis on it instead of Ray. Um, I do like the packaging on these. I don't think I mentioned that when I was reviewing Lewis, but I actually do rather like the packaging, the window style. And if you collect the Marvel Select figures, this is the same type of packaging for those. And so if you've got a lot of the Select range, it'll blend right in with it. Um, much like the Lewis review, I'm also going to do comparisons with the Kenner and Mattel figures. And I guess I'm going to cut here and I will be back once I get them out of the package. Alright, we are back. I've gotten Ray out of the packaging here. And I have to say, it's a much better figure than Lewis. Uh, none of my joints were frozen. I was very fortunate with that. Uh, I don't know if the uh, newer release has had quite as many problems as the initial Toys R Us wave did, but he, you know, he poses just fine. Uh, one of the concerns I had from early reviews of the Toys R Us version was the hands possibly breaking when trying to remove them from the figure. But this hand on the right, uh, the one that came packaged with it, just popped right out. I didn't even, I didn't even pull on it. I went to, you know, articulate the hinge, and it just popped right out of the hand, or popped right out of the wrist. And then the left one popped out pretty easily as well. And it looks like, from what I've seen of the other ones, the Toys R Us ones, it looks like they've widened the hole a little bit to allow them to pop in and out easier. Um, the pack on the back is very nicely sculpted. Uh, there are a lot of details that are very, very accurate. Uh, there are a few that are not so accurate, but overall I think they did a really good job of nailing the look of the pack from the films. Definitely captures the spirit of it in any, in any event. Uh, the ribbon cable I feel could have been painted better. Uh, I don't really like the very bright cartoony colors. Uh, the ones in the movie are a bit more subdued than that, and by a bit I mean a lot. Uh, some of the stickers could be better adhered, uh, particularly this one here. Uh, it's just peeling up around. It's on a round surface, and it doesn't want to stick. Um, some of the detail pieces, like this red rod here on the end of this box, should be brass or copper colored. Um, some of that's nitpicky but it, it would have been a nice detail. There's a couple of details missing, but at this scale, I have to say they quite they quite nailed it. I was actually... It, it's going to be a complaint here in a minute, but it, you can't really see it on camera, but the uh, the hook for the, uh, the thrower on the film packs, uh, they replicated that fairly well. It should have been painted silver, but the... Uh, design of it is replicated quite well. Uh, the reason why it's a complaint, and the reason in particular that I have Ray holding his thrower, is that the thrower doesn't attach to it. Not very securely. Uh, you can kind of hang it up there, but it will almost fall off right away. It's not a very snug fit, to say the least. Um, one of the reasons why that kind of bothers me is that Mattel solved that 
just fine if we'll bring in the uh, Mattel Ray Stance figure. Mattel's, as you can see, is holstered on the pack just fine. And they did this by extending the hook out a little bit more than it should be and putting a hole on the back of the thrower so that it just pops right on. Now they had to make it a little bit inaccurate to do that, but you know it allowed for you to attach that, which was a very nice touch. And if we even go back further to the real Ghostbusters toy line, here I've got a real Ghostbusters Ray Stance, even the real Ghostbusters toy line from 1986 solved that problem. This isn't actually one of the 86 you know, Ray Stance figures for the record, but it's the same pack design that they had. And, you know, it can be removed. This one's actually broken, so even with the top of it broken, it can still hook onto the pack just fine. And, you know, it stays up there. You know, so if 30 years ago Kenner could solve that problem, one has to wonder why Diamond Select couldn't figure that out. But that's really as far as the pack goes, my only major complaint. There's a couple of nitpicky things, like it sits too, like the pack frame that it's attached to sits too high on the pack. It should be. The pack frame should actually be a little bit smaller than it is. Or the pack bigger, actually, now that I'm looking at it. I might have to do some comparisons to see just how big that pack should be. The pack may actually be undersized. Um, I've never really paid much attention to how big it is when I'm wearing my replica one. But it doesn't look quite wide enough. But I think the pack frame's a little bit long anyway, because the pack's bottom pad here, this kidney pad, should be sitting right at the small of the back, and instead it's sitting more on the, you know, more on the hips. And it, it shouldn't be. So the pack frame should be at least a little bit smaller, and I think the pack maybe should be a little bit bigger. So that's actually something that can be said about it. That That's a complaint. Um, the pack is loose on the figure. It's not secured to the figure, so it is possible to remove the pack. Um, the pack is, you know, the pack straps here, they peg in right here on the the kidney pad and on this side as well. And it is possible to work that peg out. And if you do, then you can remove the pack. Be warned though, some people have broken that peg by doing that. So it's, you know, sort of do it at your own risk thing. Um, paint apps, the paint on the pack other than the ribbon cable and some of the color choices, it's, you know, the parts that needed to be painted are painted. Um, the thrower, there are some details that could have been painted in or should have been painted in, like the hook here on the end of the thrower should have been painted. There's little brass connectors there. Um, some of the knobs should have been painted. Uh, some of them are painted, some of them aren't. But then again, sometimes those are black on the throwers. It just depends on which one you're looking at. So that's, I guess, an artistic choice on their part as to which one they wanted to go for. Um, much like the Lewis figure, the joints aren't molded in the color of the, the suit, uh, particularly in the... Uh, particularly in the arms, like in the elbows. Uh, you can see here they're molded in a black. And when I move the joints, it scraped the paint away so you can see the exposed black plastic. Um, that's not so big of a problem for the elbows since they're hidden by the 
elbow pads for the most part. But on the inside of the elbows, if you straighten the elbows out, um, you can, like, the shininess of it comes through. There's black paint applied there, you know, for the uh, inside of the elbow pad, which has, like, a black square on it. But if that is, uh, you know, if that's, you know, if you bend it, then it scrapes that paint away and you get a glossy finish on it instead of the matte finish that it has straight from the factory. But, like I said, none of the joints are frozen, um, which surprised me. I expected it to be rather like the Lewis figure, where at least, you know, some of the joints were frozen. The double knee joints are very, very tight, but they do bend, and I don't feel like I'm going to break the figure. They just, you know, they don't want to move. They're... They're sort of ratcheted, like like they're molded with, it almost feels like they're molded with a gear of some sort on the inside so that as you bend it, it actually clicks into place. I don't know if you can hear that, but it actually sort of pops into place. Let me hold it up to the microphone. So it's a very, very tight joint on both sides, but they do move, which, given the Lewis figure, that's an improvement. Uh, it takes me a minute sometimes to get him to stand, uh, partly because the area I'm reviewing and isn't perfectly level, but he will stand up. Uh, I've heard some complaints that they're kind of top-heavy, and they are. But so far, I haven't had any trouble getting Ray to stand up. Uh, his feet are kind of rounded off on the front instead of being flat. And that does cause him to be a little bit unstable. So if you know something vibrates the area he's standing on, it may you know it's going to cause him to fall over. So keep that in mind. You might want to keep some blue tack handy and maybe just stick it under his feet to make sure he doesn't fall over, but if the area is fairly stable and you're not going to have to worry too much about vibration, he should stand up just fine. It would have been nice if they'd included a stand like they did for the Toys R Us versions, but it's not a huge loss. Um, the paint apps on the suit, um, they did a wash on it, which gives it this kind of muddy, dirty color, and it's rather spot uh, splotchy and streaky in places, and I'm not a fan of it. I would have rather it just been a base, you know, khaki tan color instead of this, you know, muddy brown. Uh, there are certain color choices I'm not a fan of, like the zipper pull on the uh, the front of the suit here is painted silver when it should just be the same color as the fabric, because it actually is the fabric. Uh, the hose connector here shouldn't be silver, it should be a you know gray color. And the hose, I think, would have been better if it had been a clear, a clear piece. Also, a softer plastic probably would have been better. I'm a afraid that after some posing, this will probably end up snapping. It's a rather stiff plastic. It's not super stiff, but something that the Mattel figures sometimes suffered from is that they made the throwers and the hoses too hard. This is a this is one from a broken figure that I actually bought for customizing, so I wasn't too worried about it breaking but it snapped off here at the end of the thrower. The cord did. And that's because the cord and the thrower were both made from a stiff plastic. It bends a little bit, but it's much more stiff than they usually are. If I bring the other ray in, the Mattel ray, they're usually a softer plastic. And that allows them to you know, bend and flex without having to worry too much about them breaking. 
the uh, cord for the pack, the hose, is a very soft material, very flexible, and I feel like the leg hose should have been made from the same material, just in a yellow color. I think it would have been better served from that, especially if you're going to do any kind of posing, because every time you pose this leg, that hose is going to move with it. And if it gets snagged on something, you know, if you've got accessories on him, you know, possibly accessories that are released later, and you move that, you know, if it gets snagged, it could break, or if it gets pinched somewhere, I just worry that it may end up getting broken down the line. Alright, now let's talk about some of the accessories he comes with. Um, the first accessory that I'll talk about is he comes with his ecto goggles. Now, Mattel released a ray that came with ecto goggles, but they weren't properly scaled, and it wasn't a widely available figure. In order to get it, you had to get their Club Ecto-1 subscription, and the goggles were really tiny. These are actually in scale, and in order to put them on, I recommend putting them against his face, like so, and then pulling the strap over his head. The strap's kind of rubbery, but if you try to stretch it the other way, it may end up snapping. But they go on just fine. And they look great. I am actually a big fan of those. I wish Mattel's had looked anywhere half as good as those. Uh, he also comes with interchangeable hands. Uh, he's got one pair of gloved hands on, and then he's got these more open glove hands. Uh, one critique I have with the glove hands is these are literally just the flesh-colored hands in black plastic. Um, if my camera would show it, they're, they've, you can even see the fingernails on the fingertips. But they look well enough, I guess, if you're not going to get super close up on them. You know, you're not really going to notice that. And then he comes with an assortment of flesh-colored hands. You've got this one, which is for holding the thrower. He has the gloved, quote-unquote, version of them on right now. Uh, it matches with this one for the other, the other hand. Uh, he's got this one, which is the open ones that the gloved ones came with. Here's the one for the other hand. Then he comes with this one which is for holding his walkie-talkie accessory, which goes into a holster here on his belt, which slides in and out really nicely. It's not too tight, and it just slides into there. It's a little more loose than I would like it to be, but it works just fine. Personally, I would rather have had this be a gloved hand, though. I would have rather them have molded this in black plastic because the only time we ever see Ray use the walkie-talkie, and in fact, the only time we ever see any of the Ghostbusters use the walkie-talkies, was in the ballroom, or not the ballroom, the uh, Sedgwick Hotel, and they were wearing their gloves at the time. So a gloved version of that would have been preferable to the you know, the bare skin version, but, you know, it works. I can't fault them too much on that. Like I said, I would have preferred it to be a gloved hand, but it's not too bad. I kind of wonder if, hang on, Let's see if we can get it in this other hand, maybe. Well, he'll hold it. It's not meant to hold it, but it actually holds it better than the other one does. The uh, the hand that's meant to hold it, it's kind of loose. This is actually kind of snug. Even though the fingers don't wrap around it, it actually holds it pretty securely. So, there's an option. And then, the last accessory, or the last hand he comes with, I should say, is this 
mostly closed fist. And I'll have to check when I get Winston out, because he comes with the same hand. And if I had to guess, this is probably for the trap handle. I'm willing to bet the trap handle would slide in there, and you could act like he's rolling it out. If the uh, if the thumb were separated, or if the cords would come out of the trap, you could probably you know you could probably have him hold it like he was carrying it, but you know from the cable. But it doesn't. I'm not going to have that option. But you can put the uh, handle in there, and he can at least hold it by the handle, assuming it's wide enough for it to fit. Now we have one more accessory, and this one's a rather contentious one. The last one is the blast stream. I'll have to admit, I'm not a fan of the uh, the blast stream for a couple of different reasons. Uh, one, there's no way to attach it to the thrower. It's got this small end that, you know, it's like thinned out to be a connector but it, there's no hole for it to plug into. Some people wedge them up under the uh, thrower here, but I've also seen reports that that will eventually break that peg, so I'm not, not going to do that. Um, even if it did have the hole, though, <sighs> this is a very brittle, brittle plastic. I've seen reviews where people have snapped it in the middle here, you know, it's, you know, and snap this connector off. I mean, if it did have the hole for it, I wouldn't trust it to hold it. I'd be afraid that I'd snap it putting it in and out. I'm also not a fan of the color choices. They went with this solid color, which, you know, I'm not a fan of. I think a translucent color works better. But they went with this bright, cartoony orange and this you know, deep purple, or not purple, blue, for the electrical charge running around it, and it looks ridiculous. I mean, the the look appears to be modeled after the Ghostbusters 2 streams, which is odd considering it's a Ghostbusters 1 figure. Uh, if anybody's not aware of the difference, the Ghostbusters 2 streams were a more solid orange color, Whereas in Ghostbusters 1, there were more of a yellow. Um, there were also CG in Ghostbusters 2, whereas they were, you know, like... I think I think they were just superimposed uh, after being, you know, hand-animated. And it doesn't match the look of the figure. I'm just not a fan of this. Now, you can get a connector from Diamond Select if you send them an email or call our customer service center and request them. And the later figures are going to include that connector. But you shouldn't have to. Now, on their Twitter account, when people first started complaining about this, they told people to poke a hole in the end of the thrower to be able to put the connector in. Now, if you took a thumbtack, you could probably poke a hole in there. And if you wiggled it around, you could probably get it big enough to put the stream in. But the wall on that would be so thin that I don't think it would support it. And I imagine that's probably why they didn't go with that. If you look at the early prototype pictures, it almost looks like there is a hole there. And it looks like they cut that out due to its inability to support the stream. The thrower is made of a slightly... It's a rigid plastic, but it's not, like, hard. Which means that if you start thinning out that wall by putting in a hole for this, you know, this blast stream, it's eventually just gonna, you know, in all likelihood, just wear through it and either break the connector from it just weighing down too much and gravity doing its work, or it's going to tear through the wall of the thrower, and neither one is one that I want. So, 
I don't like this. This is crap. I really wish that they hadn't included it. I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. I like the idea of having blast streams. Some display options, you know, you can do with blast streams, especially if you want to do like shadow boxes or dioramas, you can do a lot of things with the blast streams if you're doing Ghostbusters, but this isn't this isn't the way to do it. Uh, one suggestion I had actually was to make a crossing the streams blast stream so you could pose your four Ghostbusters once you have all four of them and connect all four of the Neutrona ones with one big blast stream with like a Corona or something, you know, where they're all fused together. And then you've got like a massive ripple of, you know, you know, neutron, like neutrona one proton energy just blasting out of the pack. But so far, neither Diamond Select Toys nor Mattel have attempted nor announced any interest in attempting to do something like that. But I think if you're going to do a rooftop diorama, you're going to do a Gozer figure, and you're going to do all four Ghostbusters figures, you're going to do the Terror Dogs, I'd say that's a necessity. More so than this chintzy crap. Now, Mattel also did blast streams. They included them with only a few of their figures, but they did do them. If I pull out the Mattel ray here, I'll just reach over here and grab the blast stream. Now, Mattel did theirs in a similar vein. They did the orange and blue. So it's more of a GB2 style, but theirs is in a clear plastic, which I think looks more, you know, it looks more in the spirit of the idea of the Neutrona stream. And the energy's arcing off of it more than, you know, this tight ripple band, which for a Ghostbusters 1 figure is a bit more accurate to how it looked. The only problem with the Mattel figure one is that the handles being that softer rubber, after a while they will start to droop under the weight of them. But if you move the hand, the other hand, up to the end of the thrower, you know, like so, it'll minimize it for the most part. And you can just sort of support it with the hand and it'll keep it from drooping too badly. Now, I haven't tried this, but some people have said that you can get the Mattel Neutrona screen to fit, and you can. It's not a tight fit, but it does attach. So, Mattel's was so well engineered that it'll even work on the Diamond Select figures. Now, the connector that Diamond Select Toys is offering, if you, you know, email them, is essentially a clear version of this piece here on the end of it that attaches to the end of the blast stream here and allows it to hook onto the Neutrona wand. Now, supposedly, they sent these out like this because they couldn't figure out a way to attach it to the pack to attach it to the thrower. They just couldn't figure out a way to make it work. Well, I'm sorry, if you can't figure out a way to make it work, don't include it. There's no point in including an accessory that can't be used with the figure. After the Toys R Us wave was shipped, there were so many complaints that they all of a sudden knew exactly how to solve the problem, and you know now you can get it from them if you email them. I think more likely they just didn't want to ship the ship the part with it because it's extra plastic. All right, now that we've had a look at the figure and all of its accessories, I guess we'll bring in the other Ray figures here and we'll do a size comparison. So we've got the seven-inch scale Ray stance figure by Diamond Select. Then we've got the 6 inch scale ray figure by Mattel and then we've got the 
I think three and three quarter inch. Oop, hang on, three and three quarter inch ray from the real Ghostbusters line by Kenner. And so you can see what if I can get them to stand up. There we go. You can see what they all look like as they've evolved. It's almost a almost a straight line of progression there in height. If the uh, Diamond Select figure was just a little bit taller, it'd be, it'd be perfect. So that's kind of cool. See the evolution of Ray Stance action figures over the years. This one's from the original toy line 30 years ago. This one from Mattel's toy line from, I think, five, six years ago now. And the brand new Diamond Select Ray. Overall, this is actually a pretty nice figure. I was really surprised by it. Um, some of the belt equipment could be detailed better. It could, you know, be you know placed better on the the belt. But it's a huge improvement over the the uh, Vince Clortho um, Lewis Tully. Uh, one thing of interest is that the belt gizmo almost seems to be modeled after a combination of the Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2 gizmos. It's got the kind of circuit board design that's more reminiscent of the uh, Ghostbusters 1 design, but then the, uh, instead of Nixie tubes, it almost looks like they went for the, you know, the clear um, vinyl tubing with wires shoved in it that they used for the Ghostbusters 2 gizmos instead. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, the daughter board here should be in the back, uh, really kind of where this hose plugs in, which should just be shoved under the belt, you know, for accuracy's sake, rather than, you know, plugged into the the uh, the back of the belt here in this box. Uh, I think that was probably for simplicity. They probably it almost feels like this is molded in, so they may have molded that as part of the leg and then plugged it into here. But I'd have to, you know, really kind of play around with it and investigate, but it doesn't look like there's a seam there. If there is, it's fairly well hidden. But that box shouldn't be there. You know, if anything, there should maybe be like a small box on the underside of the belt that it plugs into because the original ones, they just shoved them up under the belt, oftentimes gaffer taping it around the the belt to keep it from popping loose. And the daughter board should be here in the back instead of up here on the front of the the belt. Um, the name badge, or the name tag on my stance figure is fairly well applied. It's fairly properly where it should be. Uh, I make a note of this because, from what I can tell of the Winston figure, it's not. Um, I did find the No Ghosts logo to be an odd choice. Uh, the actual No Ghosts logos in the film were only about 4 inches in diameter, whereas this one looks closer to, you know, scale-wise at least, being about 6 inches in diameter. It looks a fair bit larger than what it should, and I thought that was an odd choice. The Mattel one is kind of small for the size it should be. Um, if we slide them over here, you can see them a little bit better. The Mattel one's a little bit smaller than it should be for its scale, but then the Diamond Select Toys one's quite a bit larger than it should be for its scale. I'm not sure why they made that decision, but they did. All right, now the last thing that Ray comes with is the rooftop section. And his section is actually a mirror of what comes with Lewis. It's exactly the same piece except, you know, mirrored. And just like Lewis, 
and the paint apps are pretty good. There's some streaking of brown. I'm assuming that the idea is that it's supposed to look like, you know, it's been weather beaten over the years. I mean, this temple is supposed to be, you know, nearly a hundred years old. You know, it was on top of this building for that long, forgotten about, not maintained. So I'm sure the idea is that it's supposed to look weather beaten and worn, but. It is a little weird, the streaking patterns, but it's not too bad. And it comes with the column just like the Lewis figure did. And these are really looking good. I cannot wait to get the whole diorama finished, or, you know, assuming we get the whole diorama. It depends on how the sales go, I guess, but... I mean, this thing is going to be massive. I don't know that it's going to be quite in scale with the Ghostbusters. I seem to recall these columns being taller than they were in the films. I could be mistaken. I may have to go look into that. I have a feeling that this diorama may be closer in scale to the Mattel figures. So if you collected the Mattel line, this diorama may be a Mattel accessory instead of a Diamond Select Toys accessory, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see once we get it all completed which one it actually works better with. But unlike the Lewis one, I actually will say this one I would not pass on. Uh, I wouldn't get the Toys R Us version, I would get the, uh, the Select version. Uh, the Toys R Us version was riddled with problems. Um, some of the labels on the pack were just really oddly cut. Like this sticker here, this round red sticker on the top, instead of it being round, was like a hexagon. Yeah, it looked really weird. Or actually an octagon, I'm sorry, not a hexagon. Uh, just looked really weird. Um, and they were just... Some of the labels fit really badly, like the silver label on the original ones was significantly, well it's actually gray on this, but it's supposed to be silver. It was massive and wouldn't fit over the end filter here, this little round bit at the bottom. Uh, it still doesn't quite fit on it, but it's much closer than what it was on the initial release. So it seems like they're fine tuning it as you know, they go through the releases. Hopefully that means by the time we get to the, uh, you know, Ghostbusters 2 figures, if they get that far, they'll have them perfected. But, overall, it's a really nice figure. Um, if you're into customizing, it might be worth taking some paint stripper and seeing if you can get this wash off. Um, I'm not sure if it's painted or if it's molded in that gray plastic. If it's molded in the gray plastic, then you should be able to strip it off no problem. You, know, you just strip it down to the base plastic. If it's not molded in that gray plastic, though, then uh, stripping that off will st should <laughs> probably strip the paint off as well for the suit itself. So if you're going to try that, be careful. The only reason why I think it may be color or molded in that gray color is the pegs here that they molded for the joints are molded in the correct colors. They're not painted, but they're molded in that gray color. So it might might be molded in that color and you can strip that you can strip that brown off and take it back to the base color that it was to begin with. And if you can do that, this would be a really nice figure. Um, there's a little bit of sloppiness on the head. Uh, around the hairline here behind the ears, it looks like they just, you know, masked off like a big square around the ears and painted. So there's like huge chunks of the hair that aren't painted on both sides. It actually almost kind of makes him look like a Vulcan, like he's got pointy ears. So we got Spock instead of Spock instead of Ray. Uh, one of his eyebrows, they kind of missed the mark a little bit on. It's not too bad, but that's worth noting. 
There's a little bit of splotchiness with paint on his nose, which was something that I noticed with the Toys R Us line. Um, there was quite a bit more than that. It was really noticeable. On these, you can't really notice it unless you get really close up on them, and that's not super bothersome. I mean, the Mattel figures were far from perfect, so I think we can kind of let that slide. I mean, if it gets out of hand, then, you know, that's one thing, but for now, I think it'll be all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are a few nitpicky things with the sculpt. Um, they gave the Ghostbusters this thigh gap, for lack of a better way of describing it. Um, the flight suits are supposed to be really baggy. Uh, as somebody that wears a Ghostbusters costume on a regular basis, they're very baggy, particularly in the crotch region, because, you know, you've got to be able to move around fairly well in them, and they're a one-piece suit, so you're not going to have a lot of give like you would with a pair of pants. So the, the inseam is usually fairly baggy on the actual suits, but if you look at here, it's like, you know, it's, it's really tight. And so there's this gap in the thighs that, you know, you can't, can't close, and it shouldn't be there. Uh, they probably did that for articulation. It probably allows them to articulate a little bit better by having less plastic in the way. But it is problematic when you're looking at it from a sculpt point of view. From a articulation point of view, it probably helps, but from a sculpt point of view, it kind of detracts from the overall look of the figure. But that's fairly minor. That's not something that's gonna. That's not something that's a deal breaker for me. So, for me, I'd actually say this figure is a definite buy. But like I said, don't get the Toys R Us version. Those were riddled with uh, a lot of frozen joints, uh, part breakage. Uh, really bad paint applications. Uh, if you've got a comic book shop near you, that's probably the ideal way to get it, as opposed to buying it blind online. Uh, you want to get it as good a paint application as you can on any figure that you buy. And buying something blind, you have no way of choosing that, whereas if you're at least able to see it in a shop, you can maybe choose from a couple of different versions of it and hopefully get the best one that you can. So, I guess I will return here shortly with the Winston review, but so far, the Ghostbusters figures themselves, at least, are looking up from the initial... the initial impressions. I was really concerned about these after seeing some reviews of the Toys R Us versions, but it seems like a lot of the problems were fixed before they shipped these out. So I will be back with the Winston review and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>